Craig Sigel, your mental toughness trainer. I remember when I was 14, waiting with excitement all day at school to play in a late season baseball game, and it was for a playoff berth. Well, the bell finally rang, and I was the first player on the field, pumped and ready to go. We were playing the best team in the league, and, and everyone was jazzed up and ready to give it everything we had. Our team got along really well, and uh, you know we felt kind of like a band of brothers out there. You know, wanted to take down some giants, literally. Now the game was close all the way through, and every pitch mattered as much to us as the seventh game of the World Series. Now in the dugout, it was too suspenseful to sit. Many of us paced or, or chewed sunflower seeds to break the tension. The lead changed hands every inning as the pressure had built and had built. And then came my turn. It was late in the game. And I went up to bat with two outs and two runners on base. And we were down by one run. As I stepped into the box and looked at my team cheering me on over there, I could feel my legs trembling and my teeth literally chattering. Everybody was counting on me. It seemed like the whole world was watching. And, and I was wearing what was like a 50 pound weight around my neck. And I hit a feeble little grounder to end the inning and our chances for a win. And I was devastated. No amount of, it's okay, Craig, we'll get them next time, encouragement would help me. And I went home with a, with a sickness in my gut from feeling like I disappointed everybody. For years after that, I'd have a nightmare about pressure situations and and it always ended with me getting thrown out at first base. I'd see myself running in slow motion, like I was running through quicksand, getting thrown out. Now what about you? Can you remember a time when you didn't give your best performance or felt like you let your team or your coach down? Maybe even your parents? How did that feel for you? Were you sad, mad, frustrated, scared? And how long does that feeling last? And or maybe it's still there. You know, I regularly work with adults who point to such failures in their youth as the beginnings of habitual, destructive thinking. Do not let this happen to your young athlete. So what can you do about it? Well, there is a healthy way to handle it so your athlete learns from the disappointment and actually becomes more mentally tough from it. Now, the best thing to do is to allow the athlete to feel the disappointment and really express it. Let him sit with it for a while. Don't try and talk him out of it by saying it was no big deal or you'll come back. You won't sound genuine and they'll not trust you. And when some time has passed, and you're going to have to use your best judgment on this, then pour on the cheerleading and build them back up by reminding them that mental toughness comes from bouncing back from difficulty. Give your athlete the perspective that this failure or this mistake is only going to make them a better player in the long run. If they learn something from it. You know, brainstorm some things that they can do to improve in the area of their weakness. Let them know that you believe in their ability to come back stronger and smarter next time. And remind them of some things that they're really good at. Now make sure you use age-appropriate language, understanding that the the younger athletes, they usually recover quicker, they come back faster, but they require more sympathy while they're coming back. So the key for you as a parent or coach is to put aside your own disappointments and, and ask yourself at the moment what your athlete really needs, you know, right now, to grow from the experience. It's not about you, it's about them. Now, we offer a free ebook on how to be a great sports parent with more great tips like this. And if you haven't already downloaded it, go to our site listed below. I'm Craig Sigel, your mental toughness trainer for youth sports.